Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Airy, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado let's go. In today's first story. OP discovers his wife's past infidelity, which included aggressive pursuit of another man, while knowing he had no interest beyond physical involvement. This revelation triggers feelings of hurt, betrayal, and hypocrisy due to her past accusations of his potential infidelity. Despite their history and current life together, he struggles with lost respect and disgust towards her, and OP seeking advice to move on. Now let's get into the story. Twelve years ago for a period which lasted a couple of weeks, I felt my wife was up to something. She was hanging out with her friend a lot and just acting shady. About six months ago, I was having a casual conversation with the husband of my wife's friend. He then mentioned a guy and implied my wife had intimate with him during that two-week period. Twelve years ago, it took some interrogating dating to get answers, but eventually, my wife admitted she cheated with this guy. Cheating's bad enough, but the details are worse. The guy is known to get around. He had a wife and newborn baby at home. The guy also didn't pursue my wife. She aggressively pursued him. She also knew the guy didn't want anything to do with her and just had intimate with her because she basically served herself up. My wife swears this is the only time she ever cheated. The problem is, the details are so twisted, there's no way a woman capable of doing this only cheated once. I also got no explanation at all. Actually, I take that back. Pretty sure her explanation was it's like I wasn't myself. She wasn't very good at all. For years, Moody constantly degrading me, constantly accusing me of cheating. Which is why this cuts much, much deeper. However, the last five years prior to my finding out the truth, she's been a much better wife. But now every little thing is a trigger. If this wasn't so hypocritical, it also wouldn't be nearly as bad. She didn't just accuse me of cheating. She constantly dug for info and occasionally found some person I don't know who was willing to tell her they knew someone I had cheated with. Of course, that person had no name either. To be honest, on a different level, I could somewhat understand had this guy sweet-talked his way into her pants. However, my wife straight up admits she aggressively pursued him and that she knew the guy didn't have any interest in her other than she was easy. I've tried working it out, but everything seems to trigger memories that cause me to lash out on her. Time she denied me intimate, time she trash-talked other women for doing the same things she did. Even worse is the time she treated me badly and accused me of cheating when I wasn't. I love her, but I have lost every last drop of respect her. She absolutely repulses me. We have a home and kids and built a life together. However, in my mind, this woman now deserves nothing from me. What the heck can I do here? Worst of all, she doesn't seem to have any real, genuine remorse. Today's second story. OP recalls his tumultuous relationship with his ex-girlfriend, Casey, who cheated on him and got pregnant with another man's child. He discovered the affair on Christmas Day and left, cutting all ties. Years later, Casey and her family confront him at a restaurant, where she pleads for another chance, blaming her actions on her manipulative mother, Jane. He stands his ground, rejects her pleas, and maintains his decision to move on. Despite getting closure, he reflects that encountering her again wasn't worth it and is proud of how he handled the situation. Now let's get into the story. My cheating ex called me. Two and a half years later, my 31 male ex-girlfriend, 29 female found me and wanted to hang out. But I just ignored her after she broke my heart backstory. In 2015, I met this woman at college. Let's call her Casey. We had so many things in common and we instantly got close. She asked me out and it was a wonderful relationship. Or so I thought. We had dreams together. Sent X-rated pics once in a while we do a lot of stuff together. Not intimate yet in 2019, Christmas time, I was going to propose to her after I give her parents and siblings gifts. I even gave her mom who hates me, a gift. Casey works at the hospital, so she'll get out of work later. Or so I thought. 5 PM. She didn't come home to her parents' place. But I came and decided to give everyone gifts. When I give her younger sister, 20 female, let's call her Sherry, a laptop. She cries and hugs me because she always wanted one for school. 
Casey's father, a new barbecue grill. Moments later, Sherry told me I couldn't contain it anymore and cried harder. I asked what's the matter? She immediately grabbed me to her room and her father came along as well. Sherry kept saying I'm so sorry. Many times I was confused on why. She then showed me a pregnancy test and told me that it belongs to Casey. I completely lost it and wanted to know why and how long was the affair. Sherry informed me that the affair happened in the beginning of 2019. While I was working a lot at my factory job, she goes to see him. Makes matters worse is that Casey's mom was the one who showed the affair partner to Casey. Apparently in the month of November, Casey found out she's pregnant, and she begged Sherry not to tell anyone. After Sherry found the test, when she told me everything, my world came crashing down, and I decided to leave. But before I left, I thanked Sherry and her father. Let's call him Max Max apologized and said that if I leave, he would completely understand. We shook hands and I said thank you. I just looked at Casey's mom, and then I left my ex's house us just drove away and didn't look back. Max and Sherry got furious with Casey's mom. Let's call her Jane. Around 7 p.m. Christmas time, I informed my family on what happened, and they all comfort me. 11 p.m. My phone began blowing up with phone calls and text messages of my ex saying she can explain. I didn't answer back. I changed my number, deleted my social media, and changed my email. As much as I want closure, I didn't want to see her face. Fast forward to mid of 2021. Of my friends informed me that the affair partner who got Casey pregnant ran away after he found out he's the father, Karma, and they're looking for him. I simply said, who cares? Fast forward to the last month. I see a number I've never seen before. I answered, and it was my ex. My ex begged me to talk to her and possibly give her a chance at my favorite restaurant. I responded, why should I? After you did what you did? She rambled on. And I just ignored her because I don't want to go through the same pain that she had put me through. Casey began gaslighting me and her friends, and her mom called me a coward for not seeing her again. I told Jane, you have the audacity to say that after what you've done? She rambled on. I just hung up and blocked Jane and my ex's number. I informed her friends what happened, and they left me alone. Update, my ex found me. She's a wreck. I got closure, but I feel it wasn't worth it. It's been nearly three months since I posted my story, and apparently she found me, of all days, Mother's Day, which was last week. Sunday, my mom wanted to go to Red Lobster since she loved seafood. One of my sisters, really half-sister, but she's my sister came along as well. Let's call her Raven. We were about to leave. All of a sudden, I ran into my ex's sister Sherry and the Wicked Witch of the West, Jane, and Red Lobster. Sherry was in total shock in seeing me and I was hoping Casey isn't there with her, and thankfully, she wasn't. Jane looked at me with disgust and Raven and disbelief. Jane was in total shock at seeing Raven for some reason. Not sure why wait until later? I was about to explode until the moment I looked at my mom and Raven because they both wanted to pound Jane into the ground for what she did to me, so I had to calm both of them down. Sherry then begged me to talk to her after a heated argument involving my mom, Jane, and my sister. Raven then suggested that if I want to talk to Sherry, both of you talk alone, we won't be involved. And not the snake beach Jane. We talked for a bit and asked me how have I been? And says how she misses me and wished that I didn't leave. She told me that my ex was miserable when I left and I responded that it's not my problem. I then asked, how was school treating you? Sherry cried and said that Casey broke the laptop I gave her for Christmas a week after I left and ghosted her. I asked before I go, why does your mom hate me? I'm curious. Sherry then said it's because she saw you with another woman and that it was the same woman that they both saw just now. Little did Jane know it was my sister. I told Sherry that Casey's actions are wasted. The warranty is still available until November 2022. Sherry literally danced for joy and said she'll immediately get the laptop. After dinner, we said goodbye. We hugged and left. The next day, I waited. Brand smart work was slow. I've seen Sherry, and to my surprise, Max came along. No lie, I had a smile on my face. We talked. Max loved the grill I gave, and he still apologized. But I told him, there's nothing you can do. After the laptop was resolved and chat for nearly an hour, they insisted on talking for a while, not sure why. I told them it was good seeing them, but Max insisted on taking me to a restaurant I've never been to, and he paid for everything. 
As a thank you for giving Sherry another laptop a better one, Sherry responded, I'm sorry about this. I hope you forgive me. Please don't be upset. Lo and behold, my ex came, and she looked in worse shape than I imagined. She looked worse than a surgery gone wrong. She tried to hug me. I just stick my hand out and asked, what the hell do you want? Casey apologized and begged me to take her back, saying it was a mistake. Blah, blah, cheater's excuse. I responded, you cheated on me for nearly a year when I worked my ass off for us, and this is how you repay me? She realized that mistake and says that it was Jane's fault. And I said you went along with it. You could have said, I'm not happy with you anymore. But you didn't. It's not my problem anymore. I moved on. And you did, too, for nearly a year. And the fact you gaslight me, try to put the baby on me when we never had intimate? What the hell? And now the affair partner left you and he's on child support. Casey told me that her son now is one year old and needs a father. I told her, good luck with that. She asked, why am I being so mean? I said, you're the reason for this. I wanted kids. I nearly got a house for us, family stuff. And you threw all that away? Casey said that I threw it away because she told me Jane saw me with another woman, and she described what she looked like. I laughed and called Sherry to let her know who she'd seen. Sherry explained everything to my ex Casey was crying really hard, and that she realized all this time I was faithful. And she wished she'd never listened to Jane and says, I hate her for this. Casey begged for another chance, saying we will fix everything and we'll do anything just to take me back. I simply just told Casey, Max and Sherry wish you all the best, and walked out. I told my family why I was out a bit long, and they immediately were proud of me for not taking her back. My dad laughed and said, Jane wanted you gone, son, and found a reason, a stupid one at that. You'll do better on the next woman. So, yeah, thank you guys for everything. Today's third story. OP, in his late 20s, starts dating a woman he met while volunteering. They decide to introduce each other to their friends and family. The man's best friend, whom he's known since high school, returns from abroad, and they all meet for dinner. His girlfriend and best friend quickly bond, and they begin spending more time together, making the man feel like a third wheel. Suspecting something, he discovers that they've been hanging out without him, including at a nightclub where they were being affectionate. Feeling betrayed, he breaks up with his girlfriend and cuts ties with his best friend, choosing to move forward on his own. Now let's get into the story. I 28 male, just started going out with my girlfriend 26, a few months ago. My girlfriend and I have known each other for about a year now. We met while volunteering at some resort and became fast friends since. Eventually, I asked her out and she said yes. Our relationship has been going well and we've been getting to know each other even more, spending time together, going on dates, whenever, etc. Recently, we decided to introduce each other to our friends and family. We felt like we had finally reached that stage of the relationship and were ready to take this step further. With that in mind, we set up dates for the meeting. Before meeting each other's families, we decided to introduce our closest friends. I had already met some of her friends before at hangouts and parties, and she had met some of mine too. I had already met some of her friends before at hangouts and parties, and she had met some of mine too. But she was yet to meet my closest friend as he was away from the country for some time. Now that he was finally back, we planned a small dinner at a restaurant with our friends. I had always talked to her about him. He had been my best friend since high school and like a brother to me, so I had been wanting them to meet, get to know each other and get along. The day of the dinner we were all at the, but my best friend did not show up on time. He said he was busy and only came towards the end of the dinner because he was hungry. As he hadn't had dinner yet, the three of us decided to grab a quick snack at a fast food joint nearby before calling it a night. We chill there and talk, get familiar with. I was glad they seemed to be getting along well enough. Before we left, my girlfriend even asked him for his socials. I didn't mind because it looked like a good sign. After dinner, we dropped my girlfriend off at home, then go back to my place to chill some more. I asked him what he thought about her. He said he really liked her, she seemed like a great person and all good for me. He also said I was lucky and even made a joke that if I wasn't his best friend, he would have snatched her up and we laughed it off. I was happy to hear that. Weeks later, I and my girlfriend go over to meet my parents. My best friend was also there. I invited him because my parents were complaining about not seeing him in a long while and my girlfriend was also chill with it. 
During dinner, my girlfriend and best friend kept cutting away in hushed voices, laughing and all that. My girlfriend was sitting between the two of us and they wouldn't stop talking to each other. You'd think they were old friends. I felt left out but didn't say anything. Even my parents noticed and commented about how my girlfriend was getting along well with my friend. I just smiled and continued eating my food. After dinner, as we were driving back, my girlfriend suggested that we hang out more, go for drinks, and grab a snack. We all agreed, but again I felt so left out all through the night. Ever since then, my girlfriend and best friend would always suggest that we hang out, go for dinners, parties, etc. We always agreed, but the more we did, the more I began to feel like a third wheel. It felt felt very upsetting. How could I feel like a third wheel to my girlfriend and best friend? One day when they asked, I told them that I would sit it out. I was really tired and not in the mood to third wheel another hangout. They said I was being a buzzkill and then went out without me. I tried to pretend that all was fine, but deep down I was really bothered, so I decided to bring it up. One day, we were all together, business as usual, so I loosely commented that to see how they would react that I felt so left out. It was almost like they were the ones dating. They just laughed it off, saying I was just being silly and unnecessarily jealous. It was then that I started getting really disturbed by all that was happening. Sure, I wanted them to get along well, but not so much that I would feel like this because of it. One day, I was hanging out with my best friend at my place. He stood up to go to the restroom. While he was away, his phone started pinging continuously. It was bothering me, so I picked it up to mute it. But on the screen were multiple text notifications from my girlfriend. She was texting him to make plans to meet later that night at some nightclub. I guessed it was just another one of those hangouts, so I checked my phone too, but saw no text from her inviting me too. Obviously, I got really suspicious, so I decided to find out what's up. I simply dropped the phone and pretended not to have seen anything while keeping the meetup location in mind. Later that night, I went out to the club to see what's up. On getting there, I see the two of them in a dark corner booth drinking. My girlfriend was seated on my best friend's lap, being all touchy and drinking away the night. I got so pissed, I immediately stormed over to them and began to yell. My girlfriend stumbled off his lap as they both stood up, confused at my presence. They began to try to explain, but I was too angry to listen. Instead, I just turned around and left the club. They both got kicked out due to the ruckus. After that, they both reached out to me, claiming that I was overreacting and not trusting them, claiming they were just hanging out and having a little fun. She said that she didn't invite me because she knew I would have just said no, so why bother? She even tried to justify herself by saying that she was just bored and needed company, but couldn't reach out to me because I've been such a bore and a grump. Recently, I was pissed beyond words to be betrayed like this by not just my girlfriend, but my own best friend too. I immediately broke up with her. I blocked them both and cut all ties with my best friend too. I didn't need any of them in my life anymore. Just like that, I lost both my girlfriend and best friend in one night. I'll be fine.